Hey everybody, Dylan Loomis here. We'll kick off today's episode with a new chart that Elon tweeted out showing how the supercharger usage in North America, represented by the maroon line, is set to exceed pre-COVID level highs in a few weeks, barring any unforeseen happenings. The y-axis shows percentage of maximum levels by region, using 7-day moving averages. So 60% denotes that particular region used 60% of the maximum usage that region has experienced in the time allotted, the first six months of this year. Europe is trailing North America closely, represented by the black line. You can also see how Asia Pacific, denoted in yellow, has maintained steady supercharger usage levels throughout, while China's levels in gray have seen a drastic bounce back that started in February. Another subtle reminder to close out the tweet from Elon was distinguishing noise from signal, which I always appreciate as the amount of people who are swayed by headlines without seeking actual data is alarming. In a world where anyone can post anything, we must all do what we can to think logically and rationally and let reliable data be our guide. A Reddit user posted a picture of what the Tesla Model S and X touchscreen looks like with the rear view backup camera and side repeater cameras appearing simultaneously. The repeater cameras are optional and you have to drag down in order to activate them. The more camera functionality and customization Tesla can offer, the better, as these small features really do assist in overall vehicle safety, enjoyment, and comfort. I mention this though to bring up another major issue I see in achieving true full self-driving outside of regulations. I've read and talked to a number of Tesla owners who complain that with any rain, snow, or ice, the cameras become near useless, and despite the implementation of radar and sonar, this will never be enough to overcome cameras that are blocked by any of the aforementioned elements or something else like dirt or mud. Of course, they can be wiped or cleaned off, but this requires pulling off the road and an extra step that would ultimately become frustrating. Let me know how you guys see this playing out down below. I'd love to get a discussion going about how Tesla can overcome this and what your experience has been with this issue. Thank you in advance for any input. The Twitter account Cybertruck Nuts tweeted a render of the Cybertruck being used as an amphibious vehicle. While initially this would be a funny, creative, and moonshot idea, naturally, Elon comes in and says, I think we could make that work. Of course, this does not imply anything concrete, and this actually can't even be taken as a promise as he is just stating that he thinks Tesla has the capability to make something like that work. However, when we look at Elon's track record for things that initially sound like pipe dreams, flamethrowers, farting sounds, rocket thrusters, etc. One could surmise there's some level of possibility of this becoming a reality. It was interesting timing as I had a subscriber ask about the safety of EVs in the event of a flood where the battery packs are submerged in water. The IP rating or ingress protection rating is what's used to express the protection against solid objects and water. So, with an IP67, the 6 refers to protection against solid objects and the 7 refers to protection against water. Looking at the chart, you'd want an IP68 to feel any level of comfort with an amphibious vehicle, but this does not account for buoyancy, ease of navigation, and ultimately, any benefits of implementing something like this. Looking up Tesla's Powerwall 2 spec sheet, They have an IP67 rating for battery and power electronics and an IP56 for the wiring compartment. I was not able to find reliable data for Tesla's vehicle battery pack IP ratings. Tesla's stock price target was raised at Deutsche Bank ahead of deliveries. Emmanuel Rosner raised his price target from 850 to 900 ahead of Tesla's Q2 production update. He kept his rating at hold as his new target is 8% below Thursday's closing price of 985. Rosner wrote, quote, Despite about seven weeks of downtime at the Fremont plant, we think Tesla's Q2 global production could be in the mid 70K range, ahead of buy side consensus in the mid 60s. At the time of recording, Tesla is trading at 971 after opening the week on Monday at 999. 
There is still optimism that Tesla has a chance to reach record Q2 deliveries this year, which would mean beating 95,000. Data from China has been promising thanks to Giga Shanghai, where Model 3 production has been ramping, and this has been paired with government incentives and free supercharging incentives offered by Tesla. Reports for deliveries in North America in June have suggested up to 50,000 deliveries with 10,000 vehicles in transit. If you estimate 30,000 vehicles delivered in China, 10,000 in Europe, and 2,000 in other markets, that leaves you with 42,000, excluding North American deliveries. Europe should be low given the Fremont factory shutdown occurred during Tesla's typical cycle of production that's meant for Europe. Tesla delivered 5,600 cars in Europe in the first two months of the quarter. If they can push 90,000 deliveries for what was a tumultuous quarter, that could be the good outcome Elon was referring to in his previous email to employees. Also of note, if Tesla can somehow manage to post a profit in Q2, that would be the first time in company history recording a profit for four successive quarters, a major accomplishment given their focus on growth and expansion. Tesla posted net profits of $143 million in Q3 2019, $105 million in Q4, and $16 million in Q1 this year. S&P 500 inclusion would be back in the spotlight with a profitable Q2, but this seems inevitable. It's just a matter of time. California adopted a landmark rule requiring more than half of all trucks sold in the state to be zero emission by 2035 a move that is expected to improve air quality and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. This is the first rule like it in the US, representing a major victory for communities that have suffered from truck emissions. Oil companies and other industries oppose the measure, calling it unrealistic, expensive, and an example of regulatory overreach. California Health Firm and the California Air Resources Board voted unanimously in favor of the rule at a meeting yesterday. California's new regulations put the state squarely at the forefront of U.S. climate policy. The state has already led a regulatory revolt against the Trump administration's rollback of emission standards for cars and light trucks. This new rule sets sales requirements for zero emissions and electric versions of everything from big rigs to box trucks and delivery vans starting in 2024. The percentage of electric trucks that must be sold would gradually increase each year, with an eventual goal to hit 100% of trucks be electric by 2045, from near zero today. Supporters hope that California will become a hub for what they expect will be a thriving electric truck manufacturing industry. Amazon said last year it had ordered 100,000 electric trucks from Rivian as they have facilities in San Jose and Irvine, California. America has trailed other parts of the world when it comes to emission regulations, but this certainly is a step in the right direction. That'll wrap it up for the Tesla news for today. I hope you have a great weekend and I'll see everyone in the next episode.